Welcome to day four, where we're going to be exploring data structures and arrays. But before we uh, get to the data structures, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the homework solutions from day three. Now, what I'll ask you to do is I'll ask you a couple of questions in which you needed to write down your understanding. And the first one was write down how you would call a class constructor and give an example. And I think that as long as you understood that uh, to call a constructor, you used a new keyword. You could have given any example like circle and given it a name, let's say C1 is assigned new circle and put in the correct parameters, you would have been fine. Then write down how you would call a static method and give an example. Well, a static method, you use the name of the class dot the name of the method. And a good example will be math.random, which you've used. What is meant by the term inheritance? I think that uh, you would have been able to do that. Inheritance in Java means that you've got a superclass that a subclass inherits from. And what keyword is used when designing an interface? Well, the keyword is interface. Explain how a class would use an interface. It would use the implements keyword and would then agree to override all the abstract methods. What is inherited by a subclass? Always remember this, please. It's the non-private attributes and methods. Then the most important question, I think, was the practical question. And this one is where I asked you to design um, a class called Rectangle. Right, in this particular question, I left a lot up to you for the design of the Rectangle class. So let's go and have a look at my code, and you can compare it to yours and make adjustments if needed. And I hope that you had fun doing it. Now, what you'll see here is I have a split screen on the Eclipse. On the left-hand side, I've got uh, my rectangle design, and on the right, I've got my test program. Now, I'm not going to discuss my test program too much because um, what I've done on the test program side is I have called all the methods that I designed, and I've also used the other methods as we have designed them. So let me go and have a look. On my rectangle side, I have extended 2D shape and I implemented the draw shape. So I wanted to test the whole lot of features that we had designed previously. I chose length and width to be of type double for obvious reasons. I then created a constructor on line 8, which really, I've got to be honest and say it's, it's not really the greatest. But I put it in here just to demonstrate to you that we can overload constructors. So... I put in total default values. If somebody wants to use this constructor, it'll set the X and Y coordinate value to 0 and 0 by sending it to the superclass, and it'll also set the length and width to a default value of 1 and 1. But the main constructor is on line 15, in which there you can set the length and a width and an X and a Y coordinate value. And again, the X and Y coordinate value will be sent to the superclass. But I also check to see if the length and the width are less than zero. And if they are less than zero, I will set the length and width of this class to a set value. And notice that I have to use this because the names of the parameter lists are identical to the names of the attributes. Please do remember that. And then let me scroll down. Remember now I had to over ride the calculate area and calculate perimeter because I'm inheriting from the 2D shape class and that's an abstract class and it has those abstract methods in it. And what I did here is I calculated the area and I'm sure in your research you would have found that length time width will give you the area. And the perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width. I also had all the get and set methods. Again, the set methods, I made sure that they didn't send rubbish in. The set width, the same story. And here was something which I sort of came across, uh, which I thought was quite fascinating, and you might have not thought about it. I wanted to find out if it was square. And I returned a Boolean here and asked, is square? So the method name was is square. And if the length equal the width, I return true. Otherwise, I return false. And so the programmer using this would be able to tell whether the uh, rectangle was square or not. And of course, I had my two string methods, my old faithful. And I also had to 
override the draw method because I implemented the draw shape interface. Right now, if you have a look at the test program on the right hand side, I'm sure that if you go through this line by line, you'll understand how I have dealt with all the methods that I've tested. So I'm not going to go into detail on that. You should be a okay with that. 